I think the biggest thing that's, that has changed since uh, last year when Twitter was kind of touching the market is that we are now working as an extension arm of Twitter. So we have incredible insights into how Twitter works as a company, all the new products, and lots and lots of support from their side. They see us as an extension of their team, not as a separate partner. So it's been quite awesome, the journey that we've been going through with them. My presentation is really long. There's lots of numbers, so pay attention, and there will be a compulsory quiz at the end, okay? <laughs> not like that at all. That's the one thing about Twitter. The company is very relaxed, very much like a family environment. So please feel free to ask me questions as we go. I'm happy to answer. I've kind of tried to stick away from too many like hard figures and things. We can always talk more about that in another session or privately. I'll just take you through some really cool stuff. So marketing in the moment. This picture was taken uh, during President Kennedy's, I think it was his second term, sorry, his first term election, on the day that the results were obviously um, published to the, to the general public. This photo was taken by a family photographer. It sat in his private collection for about 50, 60 years. And then, poof, all of a sudden it was released to the public as new information. Now, when does that ever happen nowadays? Nothing gets to stay in private collection for that long. Fast forward to there we go. Fast forward to the current day. This photograph was posted on the day of Barack Obama's second term of election. He tweeted it out, and it reached record numbers. It was until the um, Oscar ceremony. It was the most retweeted and most shared picture ever on Twitter. And this is, I mean, you saw this minutes after it had happened. What does this mean for the world today? As you can see, incredible numbers. I mean, <laughs> I think any of us would be quite amazed if anything in South Africa got retweeted and favorited that many times. But what does that mean for us today? It means that everything is happening minute to minute, and Twitter has become the place that people go to, not only to get their news, but to share news minute to minute. This is another great example. That's 2005 uh, for Pope Benedict's um, inauguration. This is 2013 for Pope Francis's inauguration. Spot the difference. <laughs> um, even the news crews that were reporting were reporting more facts and more minutes and minute pictures via Twitter and via social media than they were through the traditional mediums. So Twitter and all social media, for that matter of fact, has completely changed the landscape of how people consume content how they share content, and more than anything, it's made content incredibly important. No longer are people prepared to wait a day or two for information. They want to know everything now, and they want to know it in small snippets. They're not, they're not prepared to read long articles and go searching for information. They want it at their fingertips. And it doesn't matter whether you're young or old, everybody is using Twitter, and this is not only research, but we can see it right down to the Pope. He's got his own account, and he regularly tweets and communicates with the general public. For, you know, for, for us on a general basis, I think everyone's always interested in how people are engaging on Twitter, but more often than not, what's really important is how people are consuming the content that's being put onto Twitter. Because if you look at the amount of people actually signed up, maybe 20% of those are actually sharing content, creating new content. A lot of people are going on a day-to-day -day basis just to see what's on there and to consume the content and then share it with the general public. It's a, good, it's a good thought to have in your head when you're thinking about how to speak to an audience on Twitter, how to communicate as yourself or as a brand. It's not necessarily about every person having a reply or you know, making an actual solid engagement with you, but how many people consume that content and how that content is consumed. And social media has definitely changed the way we communicate information. It's gone from your traditional TV, a little bit, you know, putting out a, a piece of content onto the internet to more minute-to-minute -minute SMSing people on Facebook, people on Twitter. And this has become, I think, our key mediums nowadays. I think this is the first place we go to when we think about a content strategy. How will we get the first message out and then how will we tie it all back with media? At Twitter, one of the big things is the company philosophy is they see Twitter as the modern-day bonfire. A hundred years ago, people would get together as a community around the bonfire, they'd share stories, and then those would be taken out into the general community. Nowadays, it's the hashtag.
This is one of the very, very first uh, sketchings of Twitter. It was done by one of the founders, Jack Dorsey, right in the beginning. In its very infant phase, Twitter started out as a very simple messaging platform. <clears throat> Not unlike WhatsApp, it was really, really simple. It was designed for mobile, and then it's been built out from there. What's really important about that is that today, Twitter is still seen as a mobile-first company. Everything is developed on mobile and then developed into web and its other, its other platforms. So that's still a pinnacle point of the company. And this was the very, very first tweet that Jack Dorsey wrote. Now, if you think about it, it started out this tiny platform that now connects the world. Anyone, anywhere in the world can connect with anybody else via Twitter. There are no restrictions. You can follow anyone, you can share with anyone, you can speak directly to anyone without any restriction on Facebook, I mean, on, Facebook, on Twitter. On Facebook, it's more of a closed platform, you're doing a one-to-one -one share, whereas Twitter is live, public, and conversational. So, this is Jack Dorsey just setting up his actual Twitter account back in the day. And then, fast forward to a little while later, he was having a conversation one-to-one -one with his son, who. Rouhani, only a couple of uh, minutes after very, very integral things were happening in the Middle East. This is a great example of how anyone can speak to anyone at any time. I mean, think about it. 10, 15 years ago, if you thought about having a conversation with somebody like Barack Obama, you'd been like, oh, geez, that's never going to happen. The, you know, a normal person couldn't do that. Nowadays, he really does tweet back, and his team gets involved in answering a certain level of tweets on any given day. That, that's the power of social media and the power of Twitter today. This is another great example of how Twitter's been used. This gentleman is the mayor of a town, um, very, very like Midwest, in the middle of nowhere. And he created a hashtag called Twitter Town for his town. He controls everything from that hashtag. It's not a very big town. There's only about three, or three to 4,000 people in that town. But police services, um, any kind of public service is controlled by this hashtag. If anybody has anything to say, they send him a message using this hashtag and he sorts it out. It is absolutely incredible. This is a picture of one of their police vehicles. Sorry, this was in the Midwest. There was another example in the Midwest. This is in Europe. This is in Spain. And, per, and every police officer has this on their uniforms with their name and they've got their individual accounts and you can actually chat directly to them versus trying to phone a call service which makes incredible difference. This is somebody that posted about there was exposed wires in a public place that was obviously really it's dangerous to children and it needed to be fixed. So they sent this post through, they obviously included um, the whole conversation that they wanted to have with him. He then replied within a few minutes and what that basically says is he will get an electrician out there to go and fix it. I saw that, sorry to interrupt, I saw that today on Twitter, some girl had said the lights were down here, and she was at City of Cape Town, mm -hmm. which I'll be, I'd like to see if they were though. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a whole other story. <laughs> but basically, within a very short period of time, he had replied to this, and he had organized an electrician, and then he even went to the lengths of getting them to post after the fact to show how they had fixed it up, everything was done and dusted, Thank you very much for your input and you know making our city a better place. So this is a, a micro example of how Twitter is being used around the world, but it's having an impact in absolutely every sphere. Just to jump into a couple of the numbers, currently around the world there are 240 million active monthly users on Twitter. What does that mean? It's anyone who has logged on in the last month. They don't have to have retweeted or shared or done anything like that. All they need to have done is just logged on and consumed content. Because at the end of the day, that's what Twitter's about. It's about sharing and consuming content. In South Africa, we're sitting at a figure of about 2 million monthly active users at the moment, and that's growing steadily. The first two weeks of the Oscar trial, we spiked at about 3.5 million active users, which that's, those are incredible figure growth. A year ago, at this point, we were doing about 1.1 million active users. So the growth in South Africa, and if you extend it to Africa, is astronomical. Um, some countries are seeing 300% growth year on year. Um, we at the moment are seeing whew, anything up to 100% growth um, year on year or more. Monthly, we're also seeing massive jumps in figures. What does that relate 
to in actual tweets, roughly three billion tweets are happening every single week around the world. That's a massive amount of content and a massive opportunity for marketers to get involved in conversations that are happening. Of those active users that are on Twitter every every month, 75% globally are using a mobile device as well, and that would be tablet or phone. In South Africa, it's 93%. So we are very much a mobile forward. Um, country when it comes to most mobile things but specifically on Twitter and they're actually using us as a case study as to where Twitter will go, how mobile will it become comparatively to desktop and more and more what they're seeing is that within the next five years everyone will consume Twitter on mobile and there'll be very very little desktop usage. And like I said before, Twitter is live, public and conversational. It gives you the ability to follow anyone, to have anyone follow you, to speak to anyone, and have the ability to get a communicated message across anywhere in the world. You can speak about any topic to anyone, which is an absolutely incredible space to be in. Two million tweets were made around his winning um, the tournament in the, in the following 12 hours after the game. I mean, that's just around one tennis match. It's one conversation. And that's what the spike looked like. Before that, there was very little conversation going on. As he won and it was announced, obviously the, the conversation spiked through the roof around the match. You have celebrities commenting. Victoria Beckham was uh, not available to actually watch the match directly, but she was so proud of him, obviously, being very proudly a British, a British citizen. Murray then came on and was actually able to address his fans and speak directly to people about how he felt about winning. And then him and Andy Roddick had a little bit of a back and forth, which is great. And I mean, because it's public, everyone got to see this. So it sparked a lot of uh, conversation and a nice little bit of chatter that went on beyond this. And then there's the marketing opportunity. Something that's really important for a marketer on Twitter is to, if you're going to be involved in Twitter, is to plan for the events that you know are going to happen. Foregone conclusion, either Murray was going to win or um, his opponent was going to win. So what did they do? They created two sets of creative. Once he had actually won the match, they posted this out. And again, it was hu hugely well received by their audience, by the people that followed him, and it got retweeted and um, posted around the world, the world quite fast. Again, this is just a piece of organic content, and what's amazing about this is it doesn't have to be mind-blowing. It just needs to be the right content at the right time to engage with the audience and to grab the attention of the people that are watching. So what do we as marketers want to focus on? Right consumer and conversation with the right context, all happening at the right time. It doesn't always necessarily need to be a big event that's happening. Um, there are always big events, there are unplanned events as well, but there's everyday day moments and there's more of those than there are events. So on Twitter, day to day, there are, there are places where you can grab hold for your brand and start getting involved in the general conversation that's going on. Something that you're able to see on Twitter is the volume of conversation around specific daily events and happenings. So this is something that they pulled out around the hashtag hungry. And it gives you a great idea as to where in the day people are talking about food or they're interested in food. So as a marketer or you know, as the, any person doing communication for a brand, you can then decide the messaging and when you'd like to place it. And obviously you want to place it when it's most relevant, so during the spikes. This, all these spikes here, funny enough, happen around about 11 o'clock in the morning. Those are the biggest spikes. People don't seem to be quite as hungry in the evening, so they're definitely hungry around about 11 o'clock in the morning. Another great one is hashtag run. And what I love about this is how the intent at the beginning of the week is so strong, and as the week keeps up to Sunday, it's like, oh, down from there. But again, as a brand, 
if you have anything to do with apparel or sport or anything health related. You want to get in on the conversations when they're being had and when people are the most interested to receive them. And then my personal favorites, tired. Very, very solid and um, very predictable. But again, a great time. You know, we sometimes think that you can only communicate to people during mainstream times. If you have anything to do with, um, it could be medication around um, helping people sleep, or it could be programming later in the evening, you can put it around these conversations that are happening and you'll be very effective and it'll be grabbed onto. So, there's a very popular hashtag on Twitter called Why Can't I Sleep at Night? There seems to be a hell of a lot of people that have this issue. This is just a stream of conversation that was had on one evening. Zequel, which is a sleeping aid, jumped onto this. Just a cute little bit of content that they posted at the right time. Seriously, these tweets will still be here tomorrow. Let's go to bed together. They were rewarded by an incredible amount of retweets and favoriting of this. And they actually saw a direct correlation between these posts that they were doing at night and their sales. So proving that you know the direct response from the correct messaging and your actual sales at the end of the day. TV programs are an incredible way to market in the moment. I don't think it's disputed anymore that Twitter has become the second screen to TV. When people are watching TV, whether it be movies or series or live events, they're tweeting on the side. They want to know how other people are consuming the event, if it's something on TV, or in the likes of a series, it's very popular. Everyone's got their thoughts, whether it be a comedy or drama, and they want to know what everybody else is saying. So you'll notice huge spikes during TV series of conversations around the people in that show, what's being discussed. If it's a comedy, there's always spikes around one, like a one line and people love to repost those and have a laugh with everybody else. So this presents great opportunities again for marketers to get involved. So a little bit of research, 60%, 64% of Twitter mobile users use their, their phone to, to go on Twitter while they're watching TV. Those are huge numbers. If you think about the global numbers, it's massive amounts of people. 40% of all Twitter traffic around peak time is about TV. Conversations around TV, conversations around the actors, conversations about people wanting to watch TV. It's the funniest thing to see people when they've missed something, like the, the conversations they have post like a, a show, when everybody else been talking about a show, how upset they are they missed it, oh, they need to go and find the show. That, I don't always get that, but people love to have that conversation. Then 95% of online public conversations about TV happen on Twitter. And I think that is probably the most amazing stat, especially if your clients are involved in advertising on TV during um, primetime television, whether it be movies or TV series. Everything that, that's being discussed these days tends to happen on Twitter, post or during. So you have a great opportunity to get involved in further conversation with your brand or with the users, either around the TV show and just be part of that conversation or to punt interesting more, like more information around your TV ad. I mean, with TV ads becoming so expensive nowadays, more likely than not, you're doing a 30-second spot. You can't really put across too much of a message or too much content in there, but you can then extend that TV ad onto Twitter and share additional information, which has been incredibly successful for those brands that have been doing it. Sorry, can brands take ownership <coughs> of a hashtag, like um, Survivor SA? Is there any way they can stop Okay, there, there's no way to stop other people from using it because it, it's a free market. Anyone can use the hashtag. However, if your brand wants to own that hashtag, the best way to do it is to run a promoted trend, which is one of the ad products. So you own that hashtag for a day and any conversation being had around that hashtag, you will come up in the stream of conversation. When somebody searches that hashtag, any content that the brand has posted around that hashtag will come up first so you can guide the conversation. This is another great example of conversations going on during events. The bottom line is a player Matuti. The top line is the official hashtag for the game between PSG and Barcelona. Lots of conversation up and down as the, the game progresses. As you can see, closer to goal, more conversation happening. And bang. Mentions about, <laughs> mentions about Matuti eclipse those of the actual game which proves that people on Twitter are having conversations while watching the live event and they're sharing information. Um, there's also incredible use of hashtagging going on in other mediums, which then ties back to Twitter. 
all of these uses of hashtags kind of drive the conversation back to Twitter and get people discussing your brand. And all these brands have been using it incredibly effectively overseas. They either have changed their actual brand tagline to a hashtag, and they're using that in all communication, or they're starting a new conversation with a fresh hashtag around their particular campaign. And they're then able to get response from their actual follower base and other users, and they're able to direct it as well. So what does Twitter allow you to do? It creates that beautiful thread through all your media. It's sometimes very hard as a marketer to pull it all together. You want to do TV, you want to do radio. How do you keep a constant message going all the way through? You put in content onto Twitter and you use the hashtag across everything. And what is this what has research shown us? 60% higher engagement for commercials that integrate their hashtag and have content running on Twitter around the times that their ads are showing. And the, the brands that are doing it the best are the ones who have additional content flighting on Twitter just after they've shown ads to extend the reach of their TV ad. So something that we've, that we've picked up on Twitter is that the conversations around TV can be quite predictable regardless of what the show is or like if it's a movie. This is just a quick example. Um, in the UK last year, they flight to Chalkshank Redemption twice. Different channels, different times, different months. What you'll notice is the conversation level and volume is almost exactly the same for both. So people, from an emotional point of view and from a um, need to share point of view, are doing it at the same times around the same topics. In this movie, obviously, you probably find that um, these spikes here were integral points in the movie where there was a cliffhanger that then obviously boiled over and then everyone took to Twitter to have their comment or at the end everyone's having a bit of cry, a bit of a cry mm -hmm. and they're sharing it with everybody else. What we've also seen is with dramas, massive spikes of conversation before the show starts. Conversations tend to be about the last episode, people kind of refreshing and having their thoughts. It then goes a little bit quiet through the show and right at the end, massive spike again when you know something impactful happens. Comedies, on the other hand, do this all the way through because people want to share and uh, want to get other people's takes on the funny moments. So what does that mean again for us? We can predict, depending on the show, how much content we should be posting, when we should be posting, and how we can get involved in, in the content. I think what's great for South Africa, we don't always see it as that, is sometimes we're a little bit behind the States. It allows us to be able to go and see what happened for a particular show um, during airing over there and actually plan as marketers what we're going to do, where we're going to place content and the best way to communicate that content. What is distinct or known about a TV event? In the case of a, a sports event, you know that there are two teams, one has to win. So as a brand, you can plan for that. In this case, Oreo Cookie does it very well. In general, they've got a great team who, who do get the concept of, of the post-event communication. They created two creatives. This was obviously the team that won the Ravens, and the other team was Red and Black, so they had a piece of content for that. So within minutes of the Ravens winning, they were able to post this content, and they even brought in an integral part of um, the end of a match where the winning coach gets dumped with the, what basically what's left over of the team's Gatorade. So they brought in the milk to symbolize that. Great piece of content, nothing fancy, but again, resonates well with the, with the user group that you're posting it out to. And it buys you great brand favor, favor because you seem to understand what the brand, what your user is interested in. There are unfortunately also unexpected things that happen that no brand can plan for, but it can be a massive opportunity. Again, in the same year, there was a power outage in the stadium where the, the game was being held. And nobody knew what to do. 45 minutes of complete darkness. It had never happened before. But the Oreo team got together and they created this piece of content. And it was the most retweeted and the most engaged with piece of content of the whole football match. So, and they're, they're a cookie. <laughs> it's, you know, you, you would expect it to be a sports brand, but no, they just jumped onto it right content to the users at the right time. Something to note about this, and it's really important, I think, for us to educate our clients and for us to understand, with the likes of Twitter and other social media, you need to always be prepared, and you need to be able to be bold and, and take risks. 
it's really important that when you're working on communication strategies, you you are empowered to actually do something like this. Um, I think with a lot of brands, especially in South Africa, they're still a little bit nervous. They want to have final sign-off in every word, and you know they want to triple, double check things. This kind of thing needs to happen almost instantly. And I think from our, our space as a marketer, we almost need to push back to clients and say, you know what, you need to be a bit ballsy. You need to give us the space to create amazing things. Otherwise, we're never going to take that next step. These are all examples that were done the year after Oreo Cookie did all their amazing posts. It was this year. Brands suddenly, you know, they suddenly realized anyone could get involved. So with the likes of Giorno Pizza, for this particular game, it was almost a foregone conclusion in the first 20 minutes which team was going to win. So they jumped on that piece of content. Yo, this game is like a Giorno Pizza because it was done after 20 minutes. Great piece of content, was well engaged with, and it hit home with the users. Other brands took different approaches. They had inter-brand communication going on, like H&M and Axe. Tide actually pulled out, I think it was a third of their spend that they would usually use on TV ads in between the different um, sets for the match. And they created a whole lot of Vine videos, six second looping videos. They knew beforehand who else was gonna be posting ads and who else was involved in the advertising. And they, they had messaging to all the different brands. Really clever stuff. <laughs> there's one video which I couldn't actually get the video so I didn't include it. But um, there's a yogurt brand that had advertising happening during, during the Super Bowl. So they had a six second video where someone's obviously eating yogurt but you just see like the torso from like here to here and they spill like this massive wad of white yogurt in their lap. And I was just like, oh really guys? And then the, the tagline is, we can get anything else. So, I mean, brilliant, clever piece of content. And again, it was retweeted a lot of times and engaged as well. Then you have a planned event and moments that you want to jump onto. Pharrell and his hat, I think we've all heard and seen this story. But Arby's, who are a fast food brand, which have no association to beautiful like award ceremonies, they jumped on with this. Because if you look at their logo and his hat, very, very similar. And again, they hijacked the whole Grammys. Yeah. They owned Grammys with this tweet. So to your question about owning a hashtag, it's about the content, it's about how you're using it. And then, you know, in this sort of instance, they were able to grab onto a moment. But if a, if a brand does want to own an event like this, you need to go in there a little bit more ballsy, have content that hits home around it. I think it was a brilliant this. And something to understand about that post, that was a social media manager who was sitting on his couch watching the Grammys, but he was empowered and he knew the tone and what he was able to do. And he saw the moment, he was like, great, and he tweeted that. So, you know, the, when moments like that pop up, you need to be able to jump on it. And I think that's a big thing and a big education that clients need to understand is let go a little bit, hand over um, the reins to us and let us do what we do. And that's something that we definitely would like to help you guys with, is educating your clients and making them comfortable so you guys have the power to do more cool things, to do more interesting things. Twitter also extends the reach of any conversation being had on TV. This was an episode of X Factor. Obviously, all these little icons represent the amount of viewers that were watching the show that night. So during this episode, a couple of um, <coughs> comments were made by Sharon Osborne. They were then obviously repeated and tweeted out to the just the general followers and people watching. And this is just a representation of one person that retweeted it. It reached their follower base. All through the screening and into the evening, different people were picking it up and engaging with us. So you've already extended your reach quite significantly from that one person. But then fast forward to 12 hours post that. You've got all those people who have now seen the tweet and they've now retweeted. 
At the end of the day, all the tweets around this particular episode reached 18 million impressions in the UK. I mean, that's incredible. And that was just off a couple of people while watching a show retweeting. So not only did it give massive volume to what was going on on the show, it extended the reach of the show and what went on on the show right up till 11 o'clock that night. Sorry. Sorry, I was having problems with my computer this morning. Basically, I mean, the message they're trying to get across there during eight till nine, which was the actual viewing of the show, a lot of conversation was had from the people viewing it. They then retweeted it out to their smaller user bases, which extended the actual impressions that they gained from the whole show into the millions. And it extended the conversation right into the night. And it ended up having a total of 18 million impressions just on that one particular thing that Sharon Osbourne had said. And there are lots of opportunities like that all through TV viewing where you can extend your brand message by getting involved in conversations at the right time. 48% of shows that had an increase in viewings were driven by an increase in tweet volume. 29% of episodes saw an increase in live ratings just because of the additional tweet volumes that were happening and the user interaction. Um, these studies have been done in the US and the UK. Right now in South Africa, we're obviously doing research for our market. Our market is obviously not quite as big. But I think we're going to see possibly even higher stats than that because we still are a very big TV market. And um, a lot of our middle LSM viewers are still very entrenched in what they see on TV and they believe a lot of what um, you post to them on TV. So a lot more conversation. There's, there's a lot more volume going on around, around what happens on TV and a lot more opportunity for brands in an uncluttered environment. So what research showed is that stronger messaging of up to 95% association is created when you do Twitter and TV together. So if you think about how much money you're spending on TV in general, to extend your reach and to get a 95% stronger message association by doing some content, and I'm not even talking about paid content, I'm just talking about the right kind of content for your brand, is, I mean, if you can show a client that, they're going to be super happy. And what did that, at the end of the day, lead to? A 58% higher purchase intent. So if you can, again, show your clients a direct correlation between a little bit of extra money and time they're spending doing great content and communicating with their users, and a 58% growth in purchase intent. Those are numbers that I don't think any of us can shy away from. So the tweet is a dynamic storytelling canvas. Um, there are so many ways that you can tweet nowadays. Tweeting started out as 140 characters, but you now have various options. You can add images, you can bring in videos from the likes of YouTube and other content spaces. You can even pull in article content if you're doing syndication for your brand into other spaces. And then, I mean, sometimes it doesn't always need to be a whole video. It can be a really tiny piece of content like the Vine apps. What a lot of people are doing internationally is when they sponsor an event, they're doing six second looping um, videos of what's going on in that space and then they're posting them live feed onto Twitter. What does that do? You're giving exclusive content on Twitter that people can't see anywhere else and they're engaging with it on an incredibly high level because they feel like they're getting something more out of following you on Twitter. So they associate well with your brand, they engage better with your brand and they become amazing brand advocates. <laughs> There was a little conversation that went on in uh, Kenya. A couple of brands got together and they were having a bit of a backwards and forwards. And then Jurex hopped in on the conversation. And um, they, were, they were talking about a party. They created a fictitious party that they were all going to. And they replied with this, which again was minute to minute. Um, great creator, awesome little uh, bit of content. And it was retweeted a hell of a lot of times. 
So right now on Twitter, the most important thing that you can you can be thinking about when you're looking at, at getting involved in Twitter is a two-way conversation. And that is your biggest opportunity from a marketing moment. People are talking about brands every day on Twitter. Whether you are on it or not, your brand is being spoken about. This is just a normal user, Lauren, and she posted a thought about how much she loves chocolates, and she included Kit Kat and Oreo. What's really awesome is that both brands were listening, and within minutes, they came back with this content and replied to her. So Kit Kat laid down the challenge, and Oreo came back. They didn't accept the challenge, but they took a great big bite on Kit Kat. And I mean, right down to the hashtag is really clever. They've, they've thought about the moment, they've thought about the brand that they're engaging with. And users love this. And I think that's, that's a space that brands in this country need to get to, being able to collaborate. And what's great for us is we work with multiple brands. So if you see the possibility for your brands to collaborate, don't be scared to do that. Get your brands talking to each other. Get them creating positive messaging between each other because users will respond in an incredibly favorable way. So how will we exceed, succeed in the moment? I think the most important messaging is always take risks. There, you know, you you always want to be mindful of the brand and the tone of the brand, but you want to be able to take risks, put content out there, and see how people respond to it. There's no, there's absolutely nothing lost in putting a piece of content out there. If nobody engages with it, oh well, we'll try something else. We then have learned something about um, our audience. Really important, always listening. There's always conversations going on around your brands, around competitor brands, around brands that are complementary to you. And it gives great opportunities for you to get involved in that conversation, to own that conversation. And then, of course, be prepared. One of the big things is most brands that are doing it well right now have got a team who are empowered. They understand the platform. They use it themselves. And they've educated their client to the point where the client is happy for them to tweet content on their behalf. And it doesn't always need to be this heavily thought out, mind-blowing piece of content. It just needs to be in the right moment, in the right context. Okay. Thanks, guys.